thank you for coming to the Uber Freight Tech Talk. This is uh, the first time that we've done a talk uh, where we've gone through product, engineering, and design all at the same time. Uh, my name is Eric Berdinas, and I lead the product team here on Freight. I'll be talking about the freight industry, some of the unique challenges that we'll be looking at in the freight industry. Uh, we've also got Jenny Wen, who's a staff engineer on the team. Uh, she'll be talking about how we've leveraged Uber's tech uh, systems to help us scale quickly. And then Adam Schwab, senior designer on the team, talking about our users, you know, the truck drivers. And he'll show an example of a product that we've uh, recently built uh, for that user base. We'll also save plenty of time for Q&A at the end. Uh, so thank you all for coming. To just kind of start things off, I'll show a quick video about Uber Freight. Okay, so we'll come back to the video. Um, this is a still screenshot version of the video. Um, so Uber Freight, uh, it's really simple, it's an app. It's an app that lets truck drivers find jobs in their area. So if you think about an Uber driver going around the city, picking up people, taking them from one place to another place, uh, it's the same thing for truck drivers, but instead of moving people from place to place, they're picking up full truckloads of goods and moving them from one city to another city. And oftentimes this is across the country, so it's much longer trips than an Uber rides. But the premise of having an app um, and making that transparent is still the core of what makes uh, Uber Freight possible. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of trivia um, to help people kind of understand a little bit more about the trucking industry. So what is the largest migration of animals in the world? Uh, raise your hand if you think it's wildebeest. One person in the back thinks it's wildebeest. Uh, raise your hand if you think it's bees. Okay, a few more people think it's bees. So the answer is bees, but it's actually not just bees, it's 31 billion bees by truck. Um, California is the recipient of 31 billion bees from around the country. They're brought over by truck to help pollinate uh, the almond trees. And you know, not a lot of people think about trucking in this way. They think about moving goods from one warehouse to another warehouse but it actually affects a lot more than just pallets of things. It affects the food we eat, it affects the clothes we wear. And if you look around, everything in this room was brought on a truck at some point. It's not something that you really stop and think about. So the chairs, your clothes, even the little trucks in your bags were brought on trucks, as meta as that might seem. But everything is brought on a truck uh, in this country. Um, and when, you know, why is this important to Uber? Well, Uber started off as a transportation company for people. Um, but it quickly realized that this idea of transportation as a service or a platform can extend to many things, not just people, um, but also small things. And Uber Eats uh, you know, launched a few years ago. It's already a multi-billion dollar business. And it's, today it's America's most popular food delivery app using the same ideas of this transportation network that Uber built upon. Uh, and now with Freight, we're moving big things. And you can start to see some of the um, overlaps when you consider an Uber Eats partner like McDonald's, uh, they move uh, orders around to people, but they also have this massive transportation network. How do they get uh, you know, all the food into each restaurant? It's through something like trucking. <clears throat> so when you consider Uber to Uber Eats, it's really the same uh, target audience. It's millennials, it's people who are familiar with smartphones, uh, it's people who live in big cities, but that's not the same for trucking. Uh, and for trucking, it's a totally different audience. It's truck drivers. It's people who live between the cities, maybe not as familiar with uh, technology as millennials. <clears throat> and when we looked at truck drivers and trucking companies in particular, we found that over 90% of trucking companies are under 10 trucks. So it's got this long tail of really small fleets. Everyone's trying to go out there and make ends meet with these small companies. And Uber Freight can help bring them together uh, with the Uber Freight app. Truck drivers are also the most popular job in the country. That's 31 states out of 50 states. Uh, the most popular job is truck driver. Uh, that's 3 million truck drivers in the country. So it's a massive, massive user group that something like Uber Freight could potentially affect. 
but the job's not easy. So for these truck drivers, you uh, on average are spending 200 nights away from home. And, you know, that's away from your family. That's away from your kids. Uh, you're out there making money to help bring that back. Uh, but you don't get to spend as much time as we, uh, you know, as we get to do when we go home every night. Truck drivers are also having to make compromises. They've got to trade off earnings and safety and sometimes pushing themselves to the limits in order to make that final delivery. Uh, and beyond all that, truck drivers usually get paid by the mile. So they're not compensated when they have to wait for hours or sometimes days at facilities that are slow to load and unload. And, you know, Uber being a technology company that's very user centric, wants to look at each of these challenges and rethink, you know, how can we make a, a setup uh, that's better for truck drivers and better for the industry overall. But don't take uh, my word for it. I'll show you a quick video from um, a truck driver that we interviewed last year. He'll talk about some of the challenges that he's experienced in his career. And then, you know, a little bit about how he uh, believes that Uber Freight is bringing some fairness back to the market. I bring you everything you need to stay alive in any weather, at any time, without ever seeing my family. And there's a high chance I may die doing it. And you treat me like crap. That's the job. I initially looked at Uber Freight as, this is going to liberate the freight. Just like it liberated the taxi situation and all that. That's how I looked at it. It's gonna take the freight, put it on one place, and it's gonna limit it to a mathematic equation. You're this close, does it fit your criteria? You take it. That's how I feel. So it's not always been as easy as pressing a button and booking a load. And you know, looking at the state-of-the-art technology in trucking, it's very similar to what existed in the taxi industry about 10 years ago before Uber was around. So you used to have to pick up a phone, you called a dispatcher, you told them, hey, I'm leaving for the airport, I wanna be picked up tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. <clears throat> Maybe they negotiate a price, and then when you hang up, you cross your fingers and hope that they show up on time. There's no transparency, there's no GPS. Um, and to book a load today, it's actually quite similar. You, uh, there's a middleman called a broker that the, you know, a shipper like McDonald's will call or email and say, I've got a load that's got to move. Then the broker will start making lots and lots of phone calls to try to find the perfect truck that's in the right place at the right time. But a lot of that's guess and check. And you know, this actually can be measured. This efficiency lost with all these phone calls and emails can be measured. And the government measures efficiency per employee for different transportation industries. So rail, air, and trucking over the last 30 years, um, rail and air have doubled their efficiency per employee because of technology. Uh, but trucking has been pretty slow to adopt uh, new modes of technology and new ways to connect shippers and truck drivers. But not only is it inefficient, it's also uh, the largest transportation group. So you've got most of the revenue coming into trucking. It's very inefficient. Um, it, it brings in about three quarters of a trillion dollars in revenue every single year. It's, it's really huge, and especially compared to ground passenger transport uh, in the bottom. That would include things like buses and Uber and taxis. Um, trucking is about five times larger. <coughs> so, um, you know, in true Uber fashion, we started with an app, but this is really the beginning of a much larger change and how Uber believes we can bring efficiency to the economy and how we can change how goods are moved around the world, um, but focusing on the people that are doing that job, the, the truck drivers and the warehouse workers and the shippers. So a driver uh, opens up the app, they can see all the loads in the area, the price is up front, it's, it's right there, uh, so they can know how much money they're going to make. And then they can press book load, and immediately you've saved all those phone calls and emails, and on average that's four hours per load that's saved, when you multiply that by 660 million shipments every year, uh, you really see some, some massive savings just by having an app that lets you book a load. Um, but the fact that you have an app, it means you've also got all the other great things with a smartphone. You've got GPS tracking, you've got notifications, you've got updates, and we can bring that location back to the shipper. So the shipper, uh, they've got their own dashboard. They can see exactly where the load is moving. Uh, and this isn't, you know, someone moving a couch or moving a few thousand dollars worth of goods around the country. This is 
um, you know, Unilever moving $200,000 worth of ice cream. Uh, they're going to want to know where that ice cream is. Um, someone's massive birthday party is waiting for that. Uh, and shippers not only like the transparency of, of GPS and showing them exactly what's going on with the shipment, but um, they, they love the idea that we can bring something like surge pricing to the trucking industry. This would be a, a new innovation for them. And, you know, Uber thinks about surge pricing in a couple different ways. There's events that we can predict. Uh, this would be something like Mother's Day. A lot of flowers need to be shipped out of Florida to the rest of the country. So we know there's going to be a lot of demand and we can preempt that by sending trucks into the region. But there's also unplanned events. There's road closures. There's natural disasters. Uh, and I'll show some examples of how Uber has reacted to both planned and unplanned uh, events. So on that, let's do another piece of trivia. Uh, when is the best time to ship something out of California? And when I say best time, I mean, when is it the, the most profitable, uh, in this case, for Uber Freight? Is that Chinese New Year? Raise your hand if you think it's Chinese New Year. A couple of people, okay. And uh, raise your hand if you think it's orange season. Okay, a few more people. So the answer is Chinese New Year. <clears throat> now, what, what does Chinese New Year have anything to do with California? You, you don't really think about these two, and especially with trucking. Um, well, a lot of goods come from Chinese factories that come into the port of Los Angeles and then out to the rest of the country through that port. So during Chinese New Year, the factories are shut down. And for a two-week span, you've got very few shipments coming into the port of Los Angeles. So all the drivers who normally are in Los Angeles now don't have any freight to move, and they're going to say, hey, give me whatever load possible. I got to get out of here, but I want to make some money. So that freight can become really profitable. And I'll show a quick video of what I mean by that. Uh, in the video, you'll see that the pink uh, transit lines, that's where it's unprofitable, and blue means profitable. Uh, and you'll, in, at the beginning, during, uh, before Chinese New Year, there's a lot of mix of pink and blue coming out of Los Angeles in the, in the corner there. And then now during Chinese New Year, uh, most of these, in fact, all of the uh, loads coming out of Los Angeles are blue. And you can see a side by side as well. There's a lot more pink on the left. This is uh, unprofitable. And then during Chinese New Year, it's blue because drivers are you know, saying, hey, I need to uh, get out of uh, California. Give me any load that's possible. Uh, so this is an example of something that every single year we can predict that there will be a lot of, uh, or rather a lack of shipments coming out during this two week span of of Chinese New Year. So what happens if there's something that's unpredictable? Um, this would be things like natural disasters. And we actually had a great um, case study during Hurricane Harvey of last year. So uh, I'm from Houston. Uh, this is a picture of Houston during Hurricane Harvey. Um, it's you know, a massive hurricane that hit the Gulf of Mexico and it caused about $180 billion worth of damage. For Houstonians, this meant you know, lack of water. It meant they didn't have food. It meant they didn't have supplies. And trucking plays such a crucial role in a lot of these natural disasters because you can bring in the extra water. You can bring in the food. Um, but you know, with the current industry, in order to move a truckload of water, you end up making a bunch of phone calls just like you normally would. But what happens if Hurricane Harvey hits on a Saturday? You know, the brokers don't come into work as much on Saturday. You've got smaller teams. So a lot of times these loads just don't get moved. The fact that we have an app it doesn't require you know, people to move the loads around. The drivers can actually open the app. They can see that there's loads moving into Houston and they can book them directly without uh, you know, the inefficiency in the middle. So a traditional brokerage on a Saturday with one representative can move about 10 loads. And during Hurricane Harvey, the 26th uh, of August last year, we had one representative was able to move about 127 loads because of the technology that we built in the app. The drivers are booking the loads themselves. And at the end of the day, we were able to move about 5 million bottles of water down to the Texas area to support the Hurricane Harvey efforts. So how do we know to build? We're sitting here in San Francisco. We're not truck drivers. Um, how do we actually know what works for the industry and what to build? Um, well, we go out into the, the industry. This is, uh, you know, pictures of us at warehouses, um, touring the facilities, shadowing truck drivers. Um, that's a picture of me in the middle with a double hairnet. Um, we were touring a mayonnaise factory, and we were actually watching them produce the product, package the product, and then bring the product onto the trucks. And we saw the interaction between the truck drivers and the facility workers. 
Um, this kind of on the ground experience helps our PMs and designers and engineers know exactly what to build and how we can make this industry uh, better for drivers and, and better for shippers. We also go to truck stops and eat lots of chicken fried steak and gravy. So if anyone's a fan, um, go to a truck stop, they've got the best chicken fried steak. Uh, finally, we, we go out to trucking events. Um, truck drivers have a really strong community and we wanna be part of that community. So about three weeks ago, we were at the Mid-America Trucking Show and I'll show a quick video uh, that we put together and, and sent out to drivers during that event. This is actually a promo for a couple of um, trucking superstars, Jane Denham and Tony Justice. Look them up. They're uh, great artists. So lastly, um, you know, how do we scale so fast? You know, we were able to build everything. It's only been around for about a year. We launched in May of last year. And, um, you know, Uber is set up to be able to build and spin off these new businesses, but it wasn't always that way. And to talk about how Uber Freight was able to scale on top of Uber's tech flat, uh, platform. I will hand the mic off to Jenny. Thank you very much.